Hello, this is Trevor from Telecom Training. Uh, today I'll be talking to you about fiber optics versus copper. For those of you who have heard a lot about fiber optics and just don't really understand what it's all about, you have come to the right place. I've worked in the telecommunications industry for 35 years. I've retired about two years now and I've started doing some YouTube courses on fiber optics and um, I find that there are a lot of people out there who are interested in fiber optics but just didn't know what it was all about. So I've started the course on fiber optics. Uh, this is not the course, this, this is just a short video to give you an idea of what fiber optics is all about. Um, at the end of this video, in the description, right under this video, I'll provide a link to the training. It's free training on YouTube on fiber optics and it would give you all the information you need on fiber optics if you are ever interested in getting into uh, fiber optics as a career for instance, which uh, quite a few people are uh, interested in doing. Now. Um, Starting here on the top here, I have a picture of a fiber optic cable and this at the bottom is a picture of just a regular Cat5 um, cable showing twisted pair. Now traditionally this is what we use to send um, data information, voice and video signals um, over the telephone line just a copper line twisted pair. It worked for many years, this is exactly all we had actually to send signals over the telephone line. Um, but there are some limitations and we'll be talking about those limitations and we'll be talking about the reasons why um, fiber optics is needed now. On this slide we have a copper line on top here and at the bottom we have um, a fiber optic line. Now let's talk about what these two lines have in common before getting into the differences. Well what they both have in common is that we're able to transmit both voice, video and data over the copper line and we do the same thing over the fiber optic line. Now the way we do these two things is what is different. In sending voice, video or data over the copper line, we use an electric current to get this information across. To do the same on a fiber optic line, we use a light signal. So there's no electric current going through a fiber optic cable. This is just a light signal. And if you look at the top here, we, we have a splitter. A splitter is the way we split video and data away from the voice communication. So the voice goes to the telephone and the video and data information goes through the modem. And the splitter basically is what is responsible for that with a copper line. With the light signal, we don't have um, a splitter. We have something called an ONT, which is called optical network terminal. This unit receives a light signal from the fiber optic line, and it changes that light signal to electrical signal in order to communicate with your telephone and the modem. So these are two totally different technologies, but in the end, you get the same results. Of course, there are many advantages of having a fiber optic line over a copper line, and that's what we're gonna be talking about here. There are two main reasons why copper is a poor choice for telecommunications. Now, the first one here is electromagnetic induction. And the second is capacitance reactance. On the next slide, we're going to talk about electromagnetic induction, first of all. Now, electromagnetic induction is where you have parallel 
telephone lines existing together in the same cable. Now, they have many different size cables. Cables comes in different sizes, like a three pair or four pair, um, a 10 pair, 20 pair, different sizes. But all of these pairs of cables, each pair, one pair going to an individual customer, one pair is like tip and ring. Now this red wire here represents one pair, for instance, okay? Tip and ring. There's DC current on every tip and ring. Uh, you have uh, approximately 50 volts DC for every telephone line. When no one is talking, there's no electromagnetic waves being radiated as we show here. But when someone starts to speak, electromagnetic waves are radiated. This induces a voltage into the parallel wires within that cable. So this induction causes noise in a DSL line, for instance. And this noise causes errors on the line and the errors would reduce the speed or completely disable the line if the errors are very high. And also, inducing this voltage into a telephone line would cause static. And the worse the induction is, the higher the voltage, the worse it will be. If this person is speaking very loud, it would induce more voltage. If the DC voltage is higher than it should be, it would also cause more voltage to be induced into the parallel wires, causing more noise, which cause more errors or more static. So on the fiber line now, you don't have any elect magnetic waves being radiated. There's nothing being radiated externally from a fiber optic line. That's the advantage of fiber over copper where electromagnetic induction is concerned. Now we'll talk about capacitance reactance. We have the tip and the ring of a telephone line here. And here we ha I have some capacitors drawn at the bottom. I'm just trying to show you that each these two wires here the way they are together is actually represents a capacitor because there's between the two copper wires which are twisted together you have a dielectric and normally on a short distance this is not a problem just sending you know a few feet or maybe a hundred feet or whatever that's not a problem but when the line starts getting long like one kilometer or two kilometers the capacitance starts making a difference and capacitance reactance is proportional to capacitance the greater the capacitance the greater the capacitance reactance what capacitance reactance is is that when you have a capacitor you this now is one huge capacitor maybe two kilometers in length. This is one plate and this is the other plate. For those of you who doesn't know how a capacitor works, if I put a nine volt battery across this capacitor, for instance, it will charge this capacitor, which charge the plates, but no current flows through the capacitor. If I took my nine volt battery off now, this capacitor will be discharge, but no current actually flows between the plates, which is called a dielectric. So here, no current flows through the plates when it's a short distance. But when the distance starts getting large, like a two, three, four kilometers, now the dielectric starts to break down because you have a very high electromotive force on both sides. So now you, it is so strong that it breaks down the dielectric and starts to flow between plates which is flowing between the tip and the ring and that's a problem because there shouldn't be anything flowing between the tip and the ring so this causes errors on the line if you're talking about a DSL circuit or static on the line if you're talking about a voice line but usually the problem here is with DSL lines uh, because static on a DSL line as I said before um, would cause errors and errors would reduce the speed of the line 
and this distance of five kilometers maximum is really rated for a normal telephone line uh, being five kilometers max at five kilometers you would not get a very high speed where DSL lines are concerned um, the grade you may not even be able to get one kilobits per second at five megabits in order to get uh, any decent speed over two kilobits per second the, the distance would have to be approximately um, two two kilometers or so away from the central office so distance is a problem with copper the greater the distance the less speed you're going to get the less quality service you're going to get on copper and not everyone is within two kilometers of the central office so ISPs had to find a way to get high-speed service to customers that are further away. So fiber optics is the answer to that. Fiber optics can go over 20 kilometers and the speed is very high still, over 75 megabits, even 100 megabits per second. Uh, so fiber optics do not suffer from the same problems that copper lines do now for those of you who may be interested in, in a career in fiber optics um, I put together a course um, that actually I used to give this course when I was working uh, as an instructor uh, for the telephone company uh, but now I'm retired I've actually put together some training and that training is free and it's on YouTube I've just started the training uh, this is um, actually July uh, 2019 um, so if you get in now you could actually follow along with everyone else um, if you get in much later the courses will be there so you could actually um, go through the courses one after the other what I would suggest now before you uh, go away is that click on the subscribe button right below just to make sure that as the courses are completed and they're uploaded to YouTube that you will be notified right away so that you can continue your training now uh, these courses are these courses are geared for anyone who are interested in a career in fiber optics or someone who are just interested in fiber optics just want to know how it works um, this this is an extremely informative complete training that would help anyone it, it doesn't matter if you have knowledge in fiber optics or you don't we start from the beginning we start from scratch and teach you all the way what I'll do here is in the description right below this video you'll find a link to the very first video in this training and each video has in the description links to all the other videos and that's the way they will be so right now you can go to the description right after you click on the subscribe button and you can uh, copy that link or just click on that link and you will be rerouted to the training course my name is Trevor Wood thank you for watching and I do look forward to seeing you in the fiber optic training course